Hi guys. It is a lovely spring morning here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. Uh, here on this fine spring morning, that would be Tuesday, March 2nd, 2021. So I've got to get back out to my little baby tomato plants to uh, get them going to feed me this summer. Uh, before I do, do what I do every day, and that's in bringing you today's chronicle of the collapse, and I don't have to go far to find it. Right here in the mainstream media today, we have the mainstream media covering the bright green lies, the bright green lies about how uh, renewable energy and electric vehicles and all of this crap uh, are, are, are going to save the planet. And again, I uh, want to recommend, you can either find it on YouTube or over at topdocumentaryfilms.com, this interview with uh, the recovering environmentalist, Paul Kingsnorth. Uh, you, you know, talking about, t t talking about this subject, you know, the reason he no longer uh, insults himself by calling himself an environmentalist is it used to be that environmentalist fought against all of this crap I'm getting ready to talk about. It used to be that these giant mines, uh, for instance, and giant solar farms or whatever, uh, used to be things that environmentalists would have a problem with, but uh, the entire mainstream environmental movement, uh, you know, just being, just completely selling out to the global industrial uh, economy and the, and, and, the, and the giant multinational corporations and these little greeny politicians uh, you know, talking about how uh, we're just going to mine the planet to save it. The best way to save the planet is to mine the planet, cover it with giant solar farms and, and all of this crap so we can keep, uh, you know, business as usual just right on going without having to make any sacrifices. We just do a little bit of tweaking of the system and we're going to save the planet and you don't have to do a damn thing to make any sacrifices in your life. Uh, it, 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 is the, uh, it, it is the lie of the 21st century. It is the bright green lie. The, the, these little greenies. So anyway, it is good to see the mainstream media. I'm going to set you down, little dog. The mainstream media talking about this in a couple places. There's one story here coming out of Greenland talking about this going on in Greenland, about how the ice starting to recede in Greenland, about how all of these Save the Planet miners are invading, you know, taking advantage of climate change to start raping and pillaging Greenland to save the planet, but you don't have to go to Greenland. You, you, you simply have to go, well, where does this article start off? This is in our own country, uh, you know, talking about, this is right here from Reuters News, uh, starting out in Nevada. We're going to start out in Nevada looking uh, at the bright green lie blooming or not blooming in Nevada as Joe Biden and the little band of clueless greenies uh, talking about how we are going to mine our way into saving the planet. Take it away. Reuters News. <clears throat> To go electric, America needs more mines. Can it build them? Yes. Last September, in the arid hills of northern Nevada, a cluster of flowers found nowhere else on Earth 
died mysteriously overnight, conservationists were quick to suspect Ioneer Limited, an Australian mining firm that wants to mine the lithium that lies beneath the flowers for use in electric vehicle batteries. One conservation, conservation group alleged in a lawsuit that the flowers known as Teams Buckwheat were, quote, dug up and destroyed, close quote. The rare plant posed a problem for Ioneer because U.S. officials may soon add it to the endangered species list, which could scuttle the mining project. Ioneer denies harming those flowers. Their cause of death remains hotly debated, as does the fate of the lithium mine. The clash of environmental priorities underpinning the battle over Teams Buckwheat conservation versus green energy is a microcosm of a much larger political quandary for the new administration of Save the Planet President Joe Biden, who has made big promises to environmentalists as well as labor groups and others, uh, and others who stand to benefit by boosting mining. That would be the giant multinational mining corporations, including this outfit out of Australia coming in here to this country, to our public lands, and uh, ripping up critically endangered wildflowers so uh, these little clueless greenies can drive around in their electric cars acting like they're doing a damn thing to save the planet. Uh, in, in, you know, anybody who thinks that Joe Biden is uh, a friend to our public lands, don't, don't get me going. Um, <clears throat> to please the conservationist, Biden has vowed to set aside at least 30% of U.S. federal land and coastal areas for conservation, triple the current levels. And, you know, it, it still shocks me how many people suffer the delusion that our public lands are somehow uh, protected uh, from planet eaters. Uh, and this, this bright green lie that our public lands are conservation lands. Uh, so right now, I guess 10%, so Joe Biden is going to triple that acreage, he claims, to shutting down to the planet eaters, uh, which means that Joe Biden is saying 70%, 70% of our public lands uh, should be available for mining, logging. I guess he's, he, he, you know, he, he got all of this uh, <clears throat> little greeny, scored all of these little greeny brownie points by supposedly uh, making our public lands off limits to fossil fuel development. I've already had a rant about that, that Donald Trump made sure in his last few months to sell off so many, you see that Joe Biden, uh, the, it, it makes no difference. Uh, all of that is already set in motion. So, uh, so Joe Biden, uh, you know, uh, scoring all of these points while uh, telling all of these planet-eating global corporations, here are 70% of America's public lands for you to get out there and save the planet by mining. Where were we? So that was how Joe Biden pleased conservationists. But that aim 
you, you know, to allow only 70% of our public lands uh, to be raped and pillaged, that aim could, could flicked with his promise to hasten the electrification of vehicles and to reduce the country's dependence on China for rare earths, lithium, and other minerals needed for an EV, you know, electric vehicle, uh, start saying EV batteries, the administration has called the reliance on China a national security threat, which is exactly what it is. Uh, the administration will be forced into hard choices that anger one constituency or another. This is uh, Mark Sente, chief executive of Florida-based Rare Earth Magnet Company, Advanced Magnet Lab Incorporated. Quote, you cannot have green energy without mining. That is just the reality. Close quote. Thank you, uh, Planet Eater Mark Sente, for uh, pointing out the emperor has no clothes. You cannot have green energy without mining. <clears throat> Rare earth magnets are used to make a range of consumer electronics, probably including this computer and the camera that I'm filming this on, as well as precision guided missiles and other weapons. Two sources familiar with White House deliberations on domestic mining told Reuters that Biden plans to allow mines that produce EV metals to be developed under existing environmental standards rather than face a tightened process that would apply to mining for other materials such as coal. Biden is open to allowing more mines on federal land. Wow, the sources said, but he will not give the industry carte blanche just to dig everywhere. That will likely mean approval of mines for rare earths and lithium, though certain copper projects, including a proposed Arizona copper mine opposed by Native Americans, are likely to face extra scrutiny. The White House declined to comment for this article. All right, why is digging needed? Why is digging needed to save the planet. <clears throat> Demand for metals used in EV batteries is expected to rise sharply as automakers including Tesla, BMW, and GM plan major expansions of EV production. California, the biggest U.S. vehicle market, aims to entirely ban fossil fueled powered engines by 2035. There you go. <clears throat> Biden has promised to convert the entire U.S. government fleet, about 640,000 vehicles to EVs. That plan alone, just to convert the federal gas-sucking cars to EVs alone would require a 12-fold increase in U.S. lithium production by 2030, according to Benchmark Minerals Intelligence, as well as increases in output of domestic copper, nickel, and cobalt. Our federal lands are teeming with many of these EV metals, according to the U.S. Geological Survey, uh, this is Lewis Black, CEO of uh, Al Monte Industries Incorporated. Quote: There is no way 
there are enough raw materials being produced right now to start replacing millions of gasoline-powered motor vehicles with EVs, close quote. <clears throat> Despite that shortage, proposed U.S. mines from Rio Tinto Limited, BHP Group Limited, and Tofagasta, uh, Lithium Americas Corporation, Glencore Corporation, and others are drawing stiff opposition from conservation groups. The projects now on the drawing board would supply enough lithium for more than 5 million EV batteries and enough copper for more than 10,000 EVs each year, I, which I think is a tiny drop in the bucket. Mining companies insist that our federal lands can still be protected, can still be protected, while the U.S. boosts output, output, output of minerals needed to accelerate the EV transition. Former U.S. President Donald Trump and the mining industry, this is Drew McConville of the Wilderness Society, said that former U.S. President Donald Trump and the mining industry, quote, pushed the narrative that we need to mine everywhere and undercut environmental safeguards in order to build more batteries. We have confidence that the Biden administration is going to see through that false narrative. Uh, so, so here you go. This is exactly what Paul Kingsnorth uh, was talking about uh, in, in, in that interview. We have the Wilderness Society, uh, one of the leading uh, the leading uh, environmental groups siding with these giant multinational corporations claiming that there is no reason uh, that these giant mines uh, on our public lands are bad for the environment. This is the wilderness society. Are, are you guys listening to this? Is there anybody out there still calling themselves an environmentalist after hearing this crap from the, the head of the wilderness society just jumping right into bed with the, the you know with these uh, giant mining corporations promoting the big green lie uh, giant mines and environmental protection are mutually exclusive terms anywhere anywhere anyway earthworks and other environmental groups are now lobbying automakers are now lobbying automakers to only buy metals <laughs> I, I'm, this is not the onion guys I this is not the onion this is Reuters news you're hearing it right here on the mainstream media with apparently with no trace of irony no trace of irony Earthworks and other environmental groups are now lobbying automakers to only buy metals from mines deemed environmentally friendly by the Initiative for Responsible Mining Assurance, a nonprofit group uh, called IRMA. BMW, Ford Motor Company, and Daimler have agreed to abide by the IRMA guidelines. Yes, and other automakers may follow suit. Am I the only person other than maybe Paul Kingsnorth and Derek Jensen seeing the sick, twisted black humor and a group calling itself the Initiative 
for responsible mining assurance kind of reminds me of that council in Texas. What, what, what is that called? The Council for Reliable uh, Energy, the Texas Council for Energy Reliability. What, what was it? <laughs> oh, God. <clears throat> the Grainies. <clears throat> Biden has not weighed in on two controversial copper mine projects in Minnesota's environmentally sensitive Boundary Waters region from Polymet Mining Corporation and Antofagasta's Twin Metals subsidiary. Tom Vilsack, the Secretary of Agriculture, the department that oversees the Boundary Waters uh, wilderness area, has in the past opposed the Twin Metals project arguing that it threatened wilderness and marshlands. Deb Halliland, the new Secretary of Interior, the department that controls most federal lands, previously voted for a bill that would have banned copper sulfide mining in northern, northern Minnesota. Uh, that bill authored by uh, Democratic Representative Betsy McCollum of Minnesota will be reintroduced this month. Contra conservationists nonetheless remain concerned that the appeal of copper for EVs and other renewable energy devices may help these copper mines, you know, uh, posing a direct threat to the Boundary Waters uh, wilderness area, ultimately will get approved. This is Pete Marshall of Friends of the Boundary Waters, quote, if these were coal mines, I would feel much more comfortable knowing they would not be approved. Let me see, how am I going to call this one? Will Joe Biden approve a copper mine on the very edge of the Boundary Waters uh, wilderness area in Minnesota? This was a hard one to call, guys. I am going to say that Joe Biden will approve it, but he will claim that he is putting all of these uh, onerous restrictions on this copper mining company <clears throat> to uh, protect uh, this ecosystem from this copper mine. So I, I am going to say we will see approval of this by the Biden administration. Uh, in Arizona, Biden promised Native Americans whose votes helped him win the battleground ground state that they would have a seat at the table uh, if he defeated Trump. Many Native Americans are worried that Rio Tinto's proposed resolution copper mine uh, would destroy sacred sites considered home to religious deities. On Monday afternoon, Biden administration officials blocked a land swap that Rio needs to build that mine. Trump officials had previously approved that land swap. So, you know, kudos to Joe Biden for blocking that. But uh, if you read the larger article about that, it, it's pretty much kicking the can down the road because there's really not a lot that Joe Biden can do about that. Uh, other controversial projects include Idaho's Stibnite proposed mine, uh, which is under fresh scrutiny by U.S. EPA staff over fears it would pollute Native American fishing grounds. 
that mine would produce gold and antimony used to make alloys for EV batteries. In Nevada, the Department of Wildlife worries that the lithium mines planned by Lithium America and others would harm trout, deer, and pronghorn antelope habitats. Uh, the Lithium Americas mine received federal approval last month, but ranchers have sued the U.S. government to reverse that decision. I absolutely love it when ranchers, when ranchers, you know, uh, with their cows chewing up uh, our, our public lands, ranchers, you know, I call them the Bundy Gang, when, when we have ranchers suing uh, the EPA over approving a mine. There is no end to the uh, hilarious irony here. This is uh, Kelly Fuller of the Western Watersheds Project, which opposes the Lithium Americas Project. Quote, renewable energy and electric cars are not green if they destroy important habitat and drive wildlife extinct. Thank you, Kelly Fuller, for explaining this to you. Renewable energy and electric cars are not green if they destroy important habitat and drive wildlife extinct. <clears throat> Thank you. In Nevada, the death of the team's buckwheat flowers at Ioneer Corporation's proposed mine site remains a point of contention. <clears throat> the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service said that thirsty squirrels, <laughs> that thirsty squirrels may have gnawed the roots of more than 17,000 flowers for water amid a drought in the state. The Center for Biological Diversity, however, which opposes the mine, said there was evidence that humans destroyed those flowers. This is quoting uh, from the uh, Center for Biological Diversity court filing, quote, the targeted nature of the damage combined with the lack of feces, you know, squirrel feces, paw prints, hoof prints, or other evidence of wildlife suggest human involvement. Wow. The Fish and Wildlife Service is now set to rule this summer on whether the flower is an endangered species, a designation that would prevent development on much of the land Ioneer is trying to mine. Uh, Ioneer has hired scientists to move the flowers to a new site, although it is unclear if that process will succeed. These are the sandhill cranes coming in for a landing on my dock. Quote, we can extract this lithium and also save this flower, said Ioneer Corporation's chairman, James Callaway. Yes, we can have lithium for your EV batteries and wild and wildflowers if we can just keep those pesky thirsty squirrels those thirsty squirrels from uh, destroying the planet. I was talking to a friend of mine that this morning about how the squirrels, she can't grow tomatoes in her garden because the squirrels attack the tomatoes. Uh, those damn squirrels. Come here, dog. We need to talk about the thirsty squirrels. We have thirsty squirrelies. Thirsty squirrelies tearing down this planet. You need to go get those thirsty squirrelies and tell them, you damn squirrels, you got to stop eating this planet. It is those damn squirrels. Once again, it's the squirrels. 
Anyway, guys, get out there and enjoy your uh, bright green lies while you drive around in your little save the planet electric vehicle while you still can. And now I need to wrap this up and get out there and start uh, putting my thirsty squirrel food in their little pots. Bye, guys.